about two stars. We'll talk about cold or whatever we'll talk about today. It's about two stars, so please hang tight while I check that everything is okay. Sound check, camera check, lights check. How's my hair? Oh, wait, I don't have any hair. Maybe put some pants on and I am good to go. So get ready wherever you are Cause this stream is about to start Get ready wherever you are Cause this stream is about to start Hello, everyone, and welcome to another meeting of the C++ Digital Signal Processing, Juice, and plenty of other things study group. And I have the pleasure of having with me here today, Fotis and Bo. Hello. Hello. How are you all doing? Hello. We're pretty good. Pretty good and quite unprepared, but there you go. <laughs> Same yeah, here. So... Oh. Fotis, can action, you go first? Stream. Uh, what was that? Come again. <laughs> Who wants to go first? You, you can you can go first, Fotis. Okay, I will. Uh, it's just that uh, this idea that I have now, it occurred to me like three minutes ago. <laughs> you heard it here first, making... folks. Yeah, so uh, I want. I just got an idea. So this is the first synthesizer by our friend John of Tucan. Have you seen this? I yes. have not seen this. I knew that he was working on it, but I have mm -hmm. not seen it. I didn't know that he finished it. Yeah, he did indeed, and it's uh, a recreation of a Mog synth. I think it was the Mog Odyssey or the Vol. Mog Voyager, I forget. Anyway, but he did something, some interesting things with JSFX because John always makes interesting things. So this plugin has three modes, monophonic. Oh, there is some high frequency, so, but sorry about that. There is polyphonic. So yeah, this is one of the very first JSFX synths to actually have polyphonic mode, which is insane. And then we have cheat, the third mode, which allows you to get under the hood and to see even more. Sorry, I forgot the light. So it allows you to see even more stuff, even more parameters of the synthesizer. Now, but uh, the only thing is that John once again made the spelling error and he spelled triangle. Triangle. He's done this before in the EQ2 can. Let's see if he has at least fixed that one. Uh, nope, it still says frequency. <laughs> Sorry, John, I know I'm embarrassing you on a live stream. Anyway. <laughs> I, maybe, it's, it, maybe it was on purpose to be quirky. <laughs> maybe. Now, what I wanted to say is uh, that I want to use to utilize Token as well as other JSFX to create an analog style synth because this is pretty, pretty digital, pretty clean. 
So I'm gonna make a few slight adjustments to give it these analog worms that everybody is clamoring for. First of all, let's use the signs, sorry, the sine wave to give it a little bit of warble. This is the modulator. If we go, to oh, so we have to. Oh, it's synced. Wait, the modulator is not working. What's happening? So we have one bar. No. Do you have to oh. hit, pl hit play? Oh, let's try. No, it still doesn't. So yeah, this is a great walkthrough video because we have no idea what we're doing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Nope. Maybe John is in the chat. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna try to use what I'm trying to do with another since by uh, another sorry, another plugin by John. John the tape recorder, which gives you some warbling. This time you do have to press play. <laughs> it's insane that he did this with JSFX. Oh my god. <laughs> So I, I already we're starting to hear some instability. And the funniest thing is that he has created a noiser and a denoiser in the same plugin. So if we if we turn off turn on this uh, we have some tape and then it's cleaning up the noise that it's creating. So you can have the Dolby tape effect from the 70s. So already we will have this analog thingy. And last of all, I think Psyche did something new lately, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's, this is partial, no. Uh, yeah, let's use partials because we can do something crazy with the harmonics. Have you used this thing before? I no, no I have not. Okay, so this is a resynthesizer. It works both with audio input and in MIDI. In this one, we're gonna use MIDI, and we're gonna use the beautiful new uh, parallel effect feature of Reaper. Woohoo! Uh, but this time, I'm gonna. Uh, oh, I forgot, we also have containers now. So I'm gonna add these to a group and then I'm gonna create a parallel to this one. So we have a group that has the synthesizer and the tape recorder and a parallel that has partials. So this is how it sounds without the partials. And this is with the partials. If we turn off the synth. So this is like a car plus thingy. It, it can create a string like sounds out from scratch. And yes, it can also work with audio. Now let's use our latest body, the paranormal. Paranormal effects router by Sexon. And from here, I think we can, oh yeah, there we go. Using the amazing DR GUI, or rather the Reaper implementation, RIA GUI, we can choose, uh, oh, we also have Zoom. Nice, because this is 2023, sorry. We can use the dry wet knobs from here. So we can create a synth sound by layering two different Reaper instruments. And uh, from here we can also see the parameters. We can also check out the plugins just by clicking on these nodes. I know I've talked about the paranormal, but some of the features are a bit new. 
And uh, do we have the parameter? Oh, there we go. The parameter modulation. No. Also, oh, also we can collapse or expand the container. And oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. You can actually choose the volume of the container. So you are adjusting the volume of both of these babies at the same time. So I have just combined an analog synth with a digital synth. Where is, <laughs> where are all my analog purists at? Oh, and also here you can see all the parameters of each individual plugin from this baby. And uh, for example, because I cannot find the LFO in the other synth, let's try this. So we have a, uh, the filters, where is it? Did he attack the sustain? No. Oh, there you go, the position. So now we can create a parameter modulation from here. Can we also change the shape? Oh, there we go. This is one of my favorite Reaper menus because you can <laughs> choose. But now you can actually see the LFOs in, a, in the GUI itself, which is amazing. And I prefer that visualization because it is showing mm -hmm. time in one of the axes. Yeah, I think and that's what's missing uh, in mm -hmm. many visualizations in audio effects in general. So this is great. And this ACS, what is this? I forgot. Oh, yeah, this is audio si uh, sidechain. This is another Reaper feature, but we're not... Actually, you know what? Let's use that instead. <laughs> so, it's gonna react to the audio, the incoming audio. And it, and it, um, it routed the one and two on the fly. Usually you'd had to do this yourself by hand, but it did it manually. And uh, speaking of side chain, I wanted to talk about one more feature and then I'll wrap up because I don't have anything more to say <laughs> for today. But uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but Reaper did some changes in the side chain feature. So I, let's yeah, use, I um, heard about that, yes. The compressor. So let's talk about that real quick. So two can compressor does have the side chain. Now, usually you had to drag the route thing into this one and you had to create some new outputs. But now, oh no, it didn't do it. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. People were talking about how it automatically creates two new inputs. I think it does that it if you drag not into the track, but drag into the plugin. Oh, that's right. Okay. So we have to have it open and then do this. Yeah, you got it. Nope. Well, try dragging into the plugin, not the name of the plugin oh, in the sorry. list, but into the interface of the plugin itself. The and if that doesn't again. work, then I will give up. Oh, it worked. There you go. <laughs> that was too fast of me. So yeah, thank you for fixing this bug for me, Leandro. <laughs> I really <laughs> it. Here in the study group, we fix errors. Anytime. <laughs> anyway, so this was my janky last minute update. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't have much to do, but I was too busy with the soundtrack gig. And also I'm going to share with you an, a little, a nice little analog hardware adventure, if you're interested, what mm. I did in last, uh, last weekend. So, uh, I met up with a friend who had uh, an analog mixer to sh share with me. Uh, I didn't get any pictures and I don't remember the model, but unfortunately I had to carry this thing. It was huge. I, I had to carry it to my apartment. I was in my brother's apartment last weekend and I plugged it in and it was broken. So we're gonna send it by airplane to a friend who knows how to fix it. And I didn't have any tools and stuff. But I'm guessing there was something wrong with the power supply because it 
it has some uh, damage over time. <laughs> because some smoke but, uh, came out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for, uh, fortunately, no, there was no smoke. But uh, it was a pity because I really wanted to create an AI model out of that. But if my other friend is uh, capable of fixing it, I will uh, send him the tensor board instructions so he makes the model for me. <laughs> I see. And I would love to hear what the fix was. I am all into yeah. fixing things. Yes, we, uh, we should talk about it once we open it up. I let him, I will tell him to create, to put, to install a camera. So he shows me the entire process of how he fixed it. I, I would like that. I would like that. I'm always mm -hmm. interested in these things. Mm -hmm. All right. So we can play the game later, right? Yes. All right. So. Queue that up for later, and if you okay. can find the place where we stopped last time, so we can continue mm -hmm. from there, that would be great. Let's not yep. attempt again the puzzle that we never solve. Let's just <laughs> work our way up to it. Mm -hmm. And Bo, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, this will be a quick one. Uh, as per usual, I've been experimenting, and. Uh, let me turn off the sound on this one. I will share my screen. Um, start sharing, share computer sound. Yes. So, experiment number one. Um, Oh, come on, Bo, you haven't updated the EQ curve analyzer in ages. I know, I don't like it. I have the new one, but I don't like it. I why? don't even remember why. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this was a fun experiment. If you, we should check the face, which is, goes berserk. Interesting. Uh, oh. as, as you can see, what I wanted to do was we'll see what would happen if I combined an FIR with an IIR. So hmm. uh, what first thing that happens is that I use, I'm using an FIR, I'm just uh, averaging the two last samples, uh, uh, two samples, and um, then applying an, an uh, IRR to that. So I wanted, I haven't actually checked the, the audio for this, but the face is nuts uh, the, the curve is interesting um, so there's a high pass and a low pass uh, the curves looks interesting and the face response is wacky to say the least uh, but I haven't checked the audio for this but that was a sort of an experiment I was trying and then I tried um, uh, I wanted to make a horrible uh, plugin, which I've had in mind for a while. Well, before we move on to the next one, can we see the sandbox again and take a look at the code? Because sure. I didn't have enough time to actually understand everything that was there, and it seemed interesting to me. No problem. No problem. So I see that you have an average, and then there is x0, which, what is what is x0? Uh, it's just a variable. Where Store. is it defined? Ah, oh, okay, 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 okay. I see it's on the same line, x0. By the end yeah. of the line, you say x0 equals SPL0. So you are adding the previous sample. I see. Ah, okay. It, it is so just that, taking the last two samples and averaging them out. I saw this x0 there, and I didn't see x0 equals SPL0 by the end of the line. I thought, wait, wait, wait there is something different happening. But no, it's just... Averaging. Here's that, here's that sweet going at it again, writing weird code. <laughs> and then... You remember that this, this was the first tutorial, I think it, this this was the first tutorial you did coding JSSFX with... Uh... Aria. Aria, yeah. Yes. You did some indeed. scripting prior to that, but um, yeah. this was the first one. Uh... Trice, the, the, the Trice and Slider 2 is great. Your, your car is very important to us. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> That's for the next plugin. So, um, okay, okay, okay. 
So when you yeah. say combining an FIR and an IIR, it's just putting them in sequence. It's not that in sequence. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, the two filters are intertwined in any way. No, but that's a good idea, though. Yeah, I wonder if I'm... what would happen if you chose uh, some coefficients for an, for an IIR and use them in the FIR or vice versa or something like that. Yeah. But anyway, um, moving mm -hmm. on to the second plugin. Yes. Um, so tone your it on. No, that one. So this one, this is where the your call is extremely important to us. Your call is very important to us. I wanted to make a horrible plugin. Um, it's not as horrible as I hoped, but I sort of wanted to to square and square root uh, signals and then subtract the original signal. So it would, would just be aliasing. And um, I think I need to sort of uh, down sample and uh, do some bit reduction. And I know there's a bit reduction thing that you've done that I can uh, steal from. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not sure how to down sample. I, I, when I Google it, it says sort of throw away every other sample or throw away a number of samples. But uh, that is the if you are interested in down sampling to half of the original sample range or one third of the original sample range, uh, an integer multiple of the sample range, that is the strategy you're describing. You can mm -hmm. hold on to a sample and then play it again on the next sample. So you're playing the same sample twice. And so it's a kind of conditional statement, conditional logic. No, it's kind of if. like, yes, you are right. It's kind of like a conditional logic and a counter because you need to know in which block, in which part of the block you are. And uh -huh. if that's your interest, then that's easy enough. If you want to be able to control this more finely, if you want to be able to say like, I went to downsample to one and a half, or I guess 0.75 uh, of the original sample range, that is a bit more difficult because then you have to resample as well. I'm thinking if I want it to sound horrible, I need to get down to like uh, like 8K resolution instead of like 48K or like, you know. But would 8K, you be okay with getting K. the closest multiple? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I just want it to sound bad. Well, fair enough <laughs> then. So the alias. if you are interested, I'm not getting my calculator here at all. But if you mm -hmm. want... Uh, <laughs> An but the thing is, K. I, had, I actually had another thing in mind. If we could sort of, I, I can Google, I think I can Google this. Yeah, you uh, can just I, I can. output every sixth sample and you will be going from yeah. 48K to 8K. All right. Excellent. Uh, so uh, I, I could down sample in integers, I guess. I could sort of take half of it, sort of 24, 12, 6. And yeah. Do a, you want me to show what I mean real quick? Because that's code that is fast yeah. enough for me to write if you're interested. Absolutely. Certainly. certainly. All right. So I will take over the screen share here on Skype and switch to Visual Studio Code and everything is going to grind to a halt for a sec. Hmm. And I'll switch to JS Effects. And all right. So on the sample section, we will want to have a counter that is going to start at zero and it's going to go up on every sample, like so. Then, if the sample counter is equal to zero, then I will start collecting samples here. So. I'll call this the uh, down sample. I will collect this, okay? Then I will always output the down sample. Now let's work through and see why this works. 
this is just initialization code, but the first time around, the sample counter is zero, so we collect that sample. Then we produce that sample as our output, and then the counter goes up to one. The next time, this is going to be one, so or this is going to be one, so this is going to be false. So we don't collect the sample; mm -hmm. we just keep playing the sample that we have collected before, All right. and and so on and so forth. So with this logic, we will always continue outputting the first sample over and over and over forever and ever and ever. Here is the kicker. You can say here, if the sample counter is equal to, in your case, six, because 40 H divided by H is six, then you reset the sample counter back to zero. Ah. And then the next time it goes around, it will collect an, a sample again. So this will output every sixth sample and keep repeating it for six samples. All right. Yep, that's how you do it. This is a down sampler, and this is where you control if you want. You yep. may even do a slider out of this. And now it's outputting every yeah, fifth sample or every, outputting every uh -huh. fourth sample. So see, if you do this, then this is preserving the sample rate. This is dividing the sample rate by two. This is dividing the sample rate by three. Mm -hmm. And this is dividing the sample rate by six. So 48 divided by six is 8K. And I should randomize that number. Ah, there you go. Now, now you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you may take over the screen sharing and continue. Ah, yes. Uh, so what I, what I had in mind and what I've Googled a lot and cannot um, find any uh, good information on is, is FFT and my purpose with the FFT, you know, the poll X stretch, X stretch, something, mm -hmm. something uh, that blur that's blurring the FFT a lot same thing yeah. with the Michael Norris and things what it's about smearing. If, yeah smearing exactly what about if you blur it just a very very little in small amounts and well, I, li I like that and in my my purpose for this sort of my idea of what, what might work is that you blur the upper register and get rid of some of the harshness of uh, mm -hmm. let's say treble and upper mids, so you do a frequency, you split up in a couple of frequency bands, and then you blur the, the upper one, or you blur the lower one. But that's the idea. Uh, mm -hmm. So blur in small, small amounts. Yeah, I hear this this term thrown around a lot, and I'm not even sure I understand it. My idea is, and I would like you to confirm if I'm right about this, is that. You take the FFT of the signal, then when they say blur, I can, I'm thinking of just a Gaussian blur. You replace every bin of the FFT with an average of its neighbors, and then you convert the result of that back into the time domain audio using the inverse FFT. Is that what FFT blurring is? I think it is. Okay. That, that's also what I what it looks like in my mind. Perfect. Uh, what you're essentially oh. doing, because FFT, a visual representation of a sort of free, the frequency graphs like in Bertum or uh, Rhea Spectrum, or if you have a full resolution at um, with zero delay, zero blurring, it's just, it's a mess. And once you start blurring, you, you start to get a line. So that's what FFT is doing visually. Mm -hmm. So you're slowing, um, you're um, averaging out the different frequency bins. Well, but that is not, uh, ah, I see what you mean. I thought that that was more in the time. Uh, I mean, FFTs over time, that it would be smoothing, let's say. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, when people say FFT smoothing, do they mean at any one window of taking the FFT, you average the bins of the different frequencies, or is it smoothing 
over time, as you do the the window over multiple FFTs over time. Do you I see think what I mean? it's the bins. Yeah, I, I think I, I think we're on the same page. Okay. Uh, I think it's the bin. I'm not sure. I'm 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 fascinated with the smearing that this Polex stretch is doing because it's, um, and I've. Tr I've tried to find a way to do it in small amounts, but you can't. You have to sort of do it in large amounts. Same thing with the Michael Norris plugins. Oh, Bo, did you check out um, a JSFX by Psyche that's called Amaranth? Maybe you can steal some code from that. What uh, a, I know I have checked it, but I don't remember what it does. It's a granular sampler thingy. Okay. Uh, so granular, but it, but that uh, smears like sample bits. Yeah. But not a, in an NFT way. Oh, 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 there's also another one that's even crazier. That's called Swellotron. And it allows you to smear two different sources in one. It's a crazy one, but I don't ah, know. Cool. Maybe I that one is using NFT. Uh, isn't he just blending samples like uh, granular processing is doing? Yeah, but it's also blurring them. It's uh, doing a reverb thingy on top of them. Okay. Because that was my other purpose of, of mm -hmm. sort of uh, maybe use a delay or sort of repeating uh, a blurred, a slightly blurred audio uh, and use and have it have it delayed. So you get yeah. a slightly blurred echo. Exactly, and I got uh, this plugin from uh, Plugin Boutique. It's called Dawson Love. Currently, it's free if you get a purchase. But the thing is that um, it works with a granular engine, and it, then it has uh, five effects on top of it, and you can uh, enable or disable the one you want. And it has a, a reverb, a shimmer reverb, a filter, uh, chorus and phaser and stuff like that. So, uh, but what you could do to make your plugin sound even worse is that you could give you could give your user the option to apply some effects like reverb and stuff before or after the smearing. So it could be pre-processor or post-processor. Okay. Just uh, brainstorming here. Oh, sure, sure. Also, you, I hate to be nitpicking again, but you still haven't updated the silent treatment 0 0.3 to 0 <laughs> 0.4 in your GitHub. So there's that. You did add a new plugin, so there's that. But oh, man. To, the the accountant. The accountant. <laughs> I'll be the, your GitHub accountant. Yeah. <laughs> This plugin is not accounted for. HR wants to What is your word. excuse now? Because you know how to use GitHub mm -hmm. now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> well, uh, I do have an excuse. I won't bore you with it. But um, mm -hmm. can you guys, uh, Kevin is uh, is uh, messaging on Discord. Could you send oh. a link to the um, uh, to the stream for him on Discord so that he has it? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, is the thing you're showing us what is called? Oh. Is it that uh, Valderian? That's the plugin that you're making now. <laughs> Valderian, I... can you pronounce that again? <laughs> uh, oh, Sorry. I was zoomed out. Of, I said Valderian, but it's Vard Centralen. Yeah. Okay, sorry. When it's uh, zoomed out, uh, this, the letters are pixelated. Can yeah, you also showcase fine, that's fine. your. Can you please showcase uh, the the new plugin that you posted in GitHub, the Rondel? Uh, I'd like to see it in action. Sure, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to need to make notes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Oh, you also added the Seawitz hack to the 127 club. 
Yes, yes, the same mm -hmm. exact. Yes, exactly. Uh, so this uh, control, this is a reference to Swedish healthcare. The doctor will see you now. Oh, okay. Uh, your call is very important to us. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a, extremely important. Never mind. That's just <laughs> nice. It's like the NSFW JSFX plugin that has <laughs> yes. sexual references to a guitar amp <laughs> way before Steel Panther <laughs> did it. I think it's a, uh, this reference are quite Swedish, but uh, mm. uh, did you send anything on uh, Discord? Uh, uh, I'm trying to do it on the phone so I don't disrupt the stream, and mm. my phone is not liking Skype at the moment, but I am working on this. Ouch. Can you, uh, where do you get a, a link? Can you do it, Fotis? Are you uh, sort yes. of, are you, uh, is your computer busy with uh, streaming, Leandro? Yeah, my computer is now showing the screen of what you were showing on your screen. And mm -hmm. I could, ha I've, the time I'm taking to explain this, I would have already sent the link to him. So, but now I'm committed to, do this, to doing this on the phone. <laughs> okay. Right. I'll wait. Um, our group doesn't have, in Skype at least, it doesn't have the allow joining via link. It let me show you a, a screenshot. No, come on. So, yeah, okay, wait. I'm taking over here. This Let's one. see what I have to do. Press participants and share a link for others to join and allow joining via link. And I will okay, copy this yeah, to the clipboard. Go to the conversation and paste it there. All right. And John is here. Hello. Oh, okay. Great to see you. Oh, he's in the chat. Hi, John. How's it going? Great hey, work John. on the synth. Great yes. work. Amazing <laughs> work. And please tell us how you, the mod thing works. <laughs> I didn't check out the video, I should check that out. So now I'm embarrassing myself now. Huh. Welcome to the club. <laughs> get in line, get a queue number. Yeah. All right, uh, okay, we are <clears throat> back. What's next? FFT. Mm -hmm. How much work, would I? will I hog uh, the entire stream if we start working on FFT stuff? Hmm, good question. I think the first step perhaps would be to explore something that I have never done myself, which is the FFT facilities in JSFX. I have implemented a very naive uh, Fourier transform, but I have never implemented an FFT and I have never used the implementation of FFTs that come that, that comes with JSFX. As it turns out, it is not exactly trivial to use the FFT because you do have to have your samples in a in the big chunk of memory, but you have to make sure that they are aligned in a particular way in memory. And then you call it and the outputs are gonna be formatted in a weird way. So all of that is like not trivial. So I guess that would be an excellent first step. And there are some places that you can borrow from. Even places like the um JS effects that is stuck in Reaper that does um, impulse responses, sure. the, the guitar cabinet. It does FFTs and the source code for that is not terribly difficult to follow along with. But yeah, the first step would be like, try and understand how to use the FFT functions in JS effects and then go from there. Awesome. Uh, I will make I will stop sharing and start making notes. All right. And cool. Kevin is here. Hello. Hello, Kevin. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thank you Hello. for allowing me to pop in. Of course. Um, Thanks for joining us. First time here. Um, uh, I guess the question I had posted, um, uh, I guess last week, is very niche. And I think I know only two other people who are looking how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm a voice actor, but I'm also, I work with a very small audiobook mm -hmm. company. And uh, part of my job, and now let me 
preface this by saying that I was introduced to Reaper last year through mm -hmm. a gentleman by the name of Mike Delgadio, who does the Booth Junkie on YouTube, and mm -hmm. fell in love with Reaper. But uh, I've used uh, Adobe Audition for years. Someone, mm -hmm. uh, someone gave me a copy years ago. Let's just say that fell off the back of the digital truck, if you will. <laughs> 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 and um, a lot of my experiences of just YouTube videos and pushing buttons. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't create music, so I don't obviously need all the bells and whistles and and super sensible. But what it mm -hmm. comes down to is I'm hoping, especially with the advent of razor editing, is mm -hmm. how, um, if possible, just either whether it's just a part of the SWS or whatever, what I part of my job is this. The, basic gist of it is this. Uh, I get audio from an audiobook narrator. We do a proofing round and I send corrections and they send me in just the little snippets of audio that I need to replace into the original to fix the problem. In Adobe Audition, and then I just discovered this in Audacity, um, uh, and I made a little video, I can share the link of it. Basically, it just seems the default is uh, in, in Adobe Audition's editor mode, I can highlight whether it's the whole correction or even if I just want a little bit, because I'll just say that some of our narrators are newer to um, narrating and their correction performance doesn't always match the original performance. And so if I can just get the little snippet of what I need, I can just highlight what I want from the correction audio, control C, default copy. I highlight in the original where I want it to fit in and hit paste and it adjusts the audio to the right, whether it needs to pull it in or push, you know, push it out or pull it in. And it's, it's done basically. And i my thought was, well, first of all, copy and paste default doesn't work like that in Reaper, obviously. But so that's my question is if, if there's a way to either custom action or if this, if that makes sense, first of all, but especially with razor editing, that would, I think that fine tuning and especially where it, it automatically puts the four points, like an adjust volume if somebody's gotten too loud, you know, rather than finding the four point action, applying that, you know, just if, if that's possible, I don't know. It may not mm -hmm. be. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? It is always possible. <laughs> it's okay, always uh, possible. Uh, Worst case scenario, we will have to write a little bit of code for that, but it is always possible. So way above my head. <laughs> yeah. So, so. I, I started sharing screen here on Skype and I will get yes. a Reaper project going here real quick because uh, the first thing is I want to make sure that I understand what you're describing. So yes. let's Can come I, up with um, an example. Way, that, yes. Can I interject? Is, is razor editing the same as ripple editing? No, this is razor. No, this okay. is this beautiful Sorry. little function and that this is I am ripple. in love with. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, me. So, excuse me as I do the bureaucracy of setting up the mic here, but... Uh, I would like to interject as well. Um, Kevin, have you used the RIA pack, which is extension like SWS? Uh, yeah, RIA pack is another extension that allows you to load tons of custom plugins and actions into Reaper. I, and have, one I, ha I, I did install RIA pack before seven hits so i don't know if i need to go back and because i noticed a number of things were taken out and uh and put in you know yada 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 with with seven so i, I think i need to revisit oh. that no i think we back automatically updates itself oh it does when oh, you okay not automatically but you have to you can do it gotcha Oops. gotcha anyway uh so there is a suit in Reapack that's called the Ultrashall API, and that's got a ton of new actions just for podcasters. And oh, really? I'm gonna check out if Razor editing is in there. One sec. Okay, because when yeah, when I saw that Razor editing and started messing around a little bit with it, I was like, this would just be the perfect being able to transfer everything from a now i will say the company i work for they pay for a license for adobe audition so i use it but boy howdy if there's a way to do it <laughs> so well, let's see now. let's see what you have yeah. in mind so here is your original project your original recording yes. and then exactly. 
what you're saying is that there is like this one sentence that the person wanted to fix or you wanted them to fix. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, the actor would re-record the sentence with the fix. And, and again, some narrators, I can take the whole piece because their, uh, their mm -hmm. performance is the exact same. But let's say I just wanted the first bit of a sentence. Yeah. So I would. Yeah. So yeah. you received this and then you go like, OK, I really want to use this part. And now exactly. you have mm -hmm. this you're going to razor mode and then you say, let's say that this is the part in the original that you're yep. going to replace exactly. with that. So what you want to do is to select this and then, or I guess, no, let's no, no, backtrack. So no, yeah, I would select the correction. You select this, you copy. Right. Then you go into razor mode and you select yes. the chunk that is going to be replaced and you want to be able to paste. Just go, yeah, control V and, you, and the way it works in Adobe Audition, it just places it in the space highlighted, mm -hmm. and then adjust the audio to the right, whether it needs to be pushed out or pulled in. Or ah, that. so, okay, um, if I just paste, of course, what happens is, it, is that it pastes at the cursor. See, yeah, so, so, right, it goes to the cursor, not the razor edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. So let's okay. do by hand the thing that you want to do. You want to delete this chunk, get out of razor edit in this case, push everything forward so that this will fit in, right, like so. Exactly. This is your goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the goal. Yeah, that's exactly. Wow. This is. You're getting me very excited here. I'm going to just stay very calm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't I know how to do this. I have never done anything like that, but it is okay. for sure possible. So wow. here's, the, here's how I, I, I approach the problem. First of all, okay. I want to see if it's already solved somewhere. And I'm going to start with the list of actions here because sometimes there are gems. So. Um, I'm going to say like something like paste, uh, insert time, paste items, paste tracks, paste as stakes in items. No, none of that. Not really. Then, um, type razor. There are tons of stuff. If you type the word razor. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And even more like if you update. This, Clear, yeah, enclose. What do you mean, Reaper? What do you mean by enclose <laughs> media items? If I run this action, what happens? Nothing. Nothing happens. That's all right. We are back. Oh, wait. Move it areas okay. backwards. Move areas up. Move nearest area. Set loop points. Automatically group all tracks. So yeah, I cannot find this in the stock actions in okay. Reaper. There is, like uh, Fotis was mentioning, Repack, which I don't have installed here in this in, in this mm. Reaper installation. Gotcha. So okay. maybe okay. in Repack there will be an action. Why is the window following my cursor with a lag? <laughs> Isn't this amazing? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with my computer it's when I start the day streaming? Off. It's like, nah, I don't feel like moving. <laughs> uh, wait, uh, Kevin, can you check out the Skype? Uh, chat. I'm gonna post some screens for shots gotcha. of all the available razor stuff. Amazing. So Not we can play around with that. We can play around mm -hmm. with that. And if the problem oh, is already wow. solved, all the better. If the problem is not solved, my Rex recommendation is to try and use the what you call it, the custom actions. But mm -hmm. I want to right. create a new custom action. So I guess it's new. Yeah, there it is. A new custom action. Okay. And in this custom action, you're going to try and chain a bunch of existing actions to do what you want to do. So probably oh. the first would be something like delete, which happens when I press delete. Remember that I did all the steps by hand? That's why, so that we can recreate them as a custom action. Sometimes it's possible, oh, sometimes it isn't. Okay. But the, you can think of this as like you press one button or you run one action and it's going to do a bunch of things in a row. So our first gotcha. action when we were doing this was to press the lead. So I'm going to undo right. that, come here to the action list and find the shortcut, the lead. When I press the lead, it's running this action, remove items, tracks, envelope points, Track depending on envelope. focus, blah, okay. blah, blah. Okay. So I will take that and I, I, I want to add it to my action here. So I will remove and I wanted to try and drag this there, but it doesn't work, so I have to find it again. Oh, it doesn't, oh, okay. Yeah, remove items, tracks, envelopes, depending on focus, and I will get the non-prompting version. 
and oh, dra okay. drag it there. Then I will find what would be the next step. I guess I would want to put the cursor here, right? Oh, yes. Okay. So that if the cursor is here and I have already deleted, then when I paste, it will be in the right place. And yes, there is the problem of this, the following stuff, but at least it will right. be in the right place. So maybe if I am yes. in Razor Edit, or sorry, in uh, Ripple Editing, then it starts doing a better thing because then we are just okay. left with a gap. So maybe we'd, we, we would want to enable Ripple Editing. And there is an action to enable repo editing. So repo. And this cycles. Cycle repo. And I will just set repo editing to all tracks. Because if you have multiple tracks, then you want to push everything. So I'll set repo editing oh, all yes. tracks. Set repo editing all tracks. And I know that uh, at the end, I will want to undo this. So I'll set the repo editing to off. But in the oh, middle... so you can just... Oh, wow. In the middle, I will want to paste, right? So I'll yeah. find what is the action that happens when I command V. It's this, called paste item slash tracks. Right. So I'll drag this here. So now what's going to happen when I run this custom action is that it's going to remove item, so it's going to press the lead, then it's going to set the repo editing, then it's going to paste, and then it's going to set the repo editing off. Let's see this in action so far. Uh, you must name the new action. Oh, right. <laughs> so I'll call this leafac underscore uh, repo paste slash replace, something like that. Sure. And then I will get us back into our stage, and I will copy this and get us back into our stage, ah, like so. <laughs> and I will cheat yeah. and put the cursor here because we haven't figured how to move the cursor with actions. Oh, but I'm I gonna. Gotcha. I'm with you. Uh, I will run this action and then boom, it does a bunch of things. Oh, I had the lower track selected, so it pasted my item here. Mm. Oh, okay. And I know that I'm cheating by giving it a nice state to begin with, but... It's okay. I just, I love your process of how you... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you were saying that you loved the process? <laughs> well, I mean, just, the process doesn't love did us. I, did, I just, did I just jinx it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened to that. Why it is... Oh, because I had the track selected. So when I ran this mm. delete, it deleted the track without confirming. Mm. So that's what's up. So what I want probably is to have the track selected, but then select the timeline and really like select this this chunk. Mm -hmm. That's that's more like it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so it's, it's the steps in the right direction. Of course, there is still some work to do, and maybe there is some action to like set the cursor to the beginning of the repo edit or something like that. Okay. Uh, set cursor to. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, there isn't one for the repo editing. That's too bad. Okay. Or the, the razor editing, I should say. Yeah. So there isn't one like that. So if you continue iterating on this, there is a chance that something will work out for you. There is a chance that okay. you will be able to do it this way. Yeah. If that's not the case, the next tool in the toolbox is to create what is called a real script. Okay. And that is going to be writing some code. So brace okay. yourself. Oh my gosh. I was going to say as a side note. So there is one, uh, there's another gentleman. I'm on a, there's a Facebook group of Reaper for voice actors. Hmm. And he teaches at the SAG after at the union for the, in the voiceover division. And I've taken a couple of classes, but one of the things he likes to, uh, he mentions this every time you talk to him is his 39 custom action for mastering audiobooks. <laughs> that he says, I just hit run, I go to bed, when I wake up, it is ready for sale. And I'm like, when are you wow. start sharing that custom action, sir? Nah. <laughs> I'd like to but look at that, please. Do you even know what it does? Oh, well, you know, he it fixes spacings, uh, too, silences that are too long. It uh, it sets up, so when you, when you submit a book to a company called ACX, which is Amazon's audiobook division, They've got very specific mastering requirements that they must match 
or they won't accept your audio. And it, 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 it fixes all the leveling. It makes sure that there's a half second of room tone at the beginning and three and a half seconds at the end of every chapter. Mm -hmm. It, uh, it, it, yeah, he just, he spent, I don't know how many months figuring out every step. I'll see if I can, if I can sneak it out of him, I'll send it to you. So you can okay. it. But, I do uh, have, I mean, there it's is crazy. an action in Reapack that uh, automatically removes uh, space, uh, silent space from tracks. Yeah. And another one that joins the audio. If you, oh, yeah. there is a user called Amagalma, and there is a Lua script that it's, it said it's called close gaps parentheses remove space between all items of selected tracks. Oh wow. Yeah. And there's another one by Archie that removes silence in selected BD items and it, you can choose the threshold. It can remove silence if it's below 60 dB or 80 Wait dB. Wait a or second. You can adjust. <laughs> what the wow. hell? Uh -oh. People are recreating these actions? I wrote this action. It was my first sweeper script. <gasps> really? Yeah. Because you see. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, in Reaper, there is already... Okay, let me get out of Razor Edit and we'll get back to this in sure. a sec. But in Reaper, by the, by stock, there is already this dynamic split, which can... Oh, yeah, the truncate silence, yes. It, and it can even truncate silence, as in if you uh, remove the silent areas, uh -huh. then I think... No, this doesn't do that. But there is a... Uh, if you enable repo editing and you do the same, then... Yeah, it joins everything. But the okay, problem is that, that this yeah. is now out of the out of time. So suppose that these are not right. just uh, this is not a correction, but this is actually like a podcast with two microphones, and this is the other person. You want to right. do this deletion, taking in account the other microphone as well, because you yep. want the two microphones mm -hmm. to continue being in sync. That is the action that I wrote, and it was wow. my first Reaper script, and it sounds by what you are explaining, Fosh, is that these scripts implement the same thing. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but yours has a menu that it takes you to auto trim and split items, while those Correct. actions do it automatically. Oh, so they are doing it by looking at the same. Okay, they are doing in a harder way instead of using what Reaper already has. They are. Because my action relies on something that amounts to this menu. It's not this menu, but it amounts to something similar. And they are doing it in a different way. They are they re-implemented this feature in code. Okay, mm -hmm. I wanted to avoid that in my action. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so coming back okay. to the issue at hand. Uh, yes. Re-scripts. It gets it gets a bit more complicated. So how about I uh, okay. how about I don't, don't dive into that right now? See yeah, if you can get no, by no. with a custom action, or better yet, if you can find an existing action in Repack. And mm -hmm. if it really Got comes it. down to writing a rescript, then we can do that on the next meeting. How about that? That, that sounds great. No, no. I, I mean, I, I'll definitely research that. Um, but what I mean. Like I said, just what you showed me right now was just uh, it, 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 it give, gives me the idea of how to approach um, building stuff like that. Because I was I was I would look at all those actions and I'm like I, I I just don't understand. But if you just but like you said as you showed, it's just step by step. You 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 did it manually, and then you're trying to find the steps to build that. I, I never thought about looking at it like that. That's brilliant. Yeah, uh, and it helps a lot that you can find the keyboard shortcuts. So if you already know, like, delete and command C and command V, they are not special things. They are just actions in right. that menu. Everything is just an action in that menu, or most things. Many things that you can do in most. Reaper are actions in that <laughs> menu. So you can recombine them in different gotcha. ways with the custom actions. And that's the best way to get things started. Even when we go down to Reaper scripts if necessary, it's always yeah. ideal, in my opinion, to try and see what Reaper can already do. Because from the Reaper scripts, you can call the actions if they already do uh -huh. what you need. Like I said, in my truncate silence script, I delegate some things to Reaper and I do some things in the script. And yeah, it always pays off to know what Reaper can do. Then we use the script to recombine these things in, to in clever ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for the time. Well, uh, I'm for definitely going to be playing it over the holiday weekend, and uh, you've you've really inspired me here. So, uh, <laughs> I will keep you guys updated with uh, if I fail miserably and say, "Hey, maybe you could give me a hand," or if I say, "Guess what? I found something." So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fantastic. Uh, 
Wait, um, I just, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see, guys see it? Yes. 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 Okay, so uh, I just wanted to show this real quick. So this is a recording of my voice. Study group. Woohoo! So these are my uh, custom actions that I love using. Okay. This is the RT one. If you click this one, boom, it automatically removes some noise and then you can use this to close the gaps. But it uh, is uh, configured to do 60 dB. So if I turn down this thingy and you press this again, it detects more gaps. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I do have one question. Maybe you can, you guys can show me before I take off here. Mm -hmm. How do you get your wave file to be all colorful like that? <laughs> oh yeah, it's uh, right here. Oh, uh, razor red. Huh. Uh, Pix display mode. Okay. You can go to and check this one. So show spectral peaks. Show spectral peaks. You can even go to these settings and you can have some options on oh. uh, where is the noise threshold, which colors correspond to which ones. And if you make a mistake, you can always reset to defaults. Oh, you can set the range. Yeah. Yeah, I love That's spectral cool. okay. peaks, especially for editing mm -hmm. dialogue or audiobooks, or in my case, I edit podcasts, or I used to. Okay. Uh, it's great because once you start using spectral peaks, you have like a muscle memory. You see sibilance. You see someone yes. popping the microphone. You see that on the waveform. It's really cool. Yeah, now see that's the view I've I've always used in Adobe Audition, the the the, the spectral view underneath, but to have it uh, in one is is very nice. Oh, and did you know that you can do a separate spectral edit from waveform edit? You can choose always show spectrogram and then use when your wherever your car cursor is, you can check add spectral edit to item. Now you oh, have Oh, okay. So the waveform is untouched, but the spectrum is edited. And you can use the gain and compression even. Wow. Yeah. There is even tons of stuff that I haven't used yet. So. Yeah, quick and dirty That's RX there. Mm, exactly. <laughs> Who needs RX? You have a Reaper. <laughs> exactly, right? Right? I mean, you know, if... I guess the only, the only other advantage, the only other... In fact, the teacher that who has the thirty-nine step mastering audiobook custom action, mm -hmm. we both agree that if, if uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar in Adobe Audition, um, there is a function called the uh, healing tool. Mm, oh yeah. Is, so if if there was a version of that in Reaper, he says we both would just be um, this one. Well, it's, sort it's... of. It, 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 you you hit it's, it's the bandaid icon, and then you can just run it over, and it smooths out the audio, you know, by, oh. uh, by hand. Um, Sounds oh, is there like a, an is, AI thing? Is it? <laughs> that's sort what of. I mean, here, I can, uh, I can, I can show you guys. Also, okay. did you know that Reaper has a noise reducer by our friend John? Oh, I did not. It's called Black Denoiser. It's like audition. You have to make it listen to some noise, and then it removes it. Wow. So yeah, the, uh, Bo, you were going to show something. Yes. Oh no, uh, you. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin, uh, yes. Let me see. Where's the uh, screen share? Here we go. Uh, Adobe Audition. So, can you guys see that? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. So this is the uh, right up here. This little band aid, the spot healing brush mm. tool. Let's say that there's a little, a little chunk right in here. Um, you, uh, depending on how zoomed in, you see the little circle right here. Mm -hmm. I just hold it down, and it slowly melds the audio oh. together and smooths it out. And you can, I'll, I'll do that for little pops, you know, and, and tiny little. Uh, like if I wanted to get rid of this, I can just brush it down a couple times, and it's gone. Oh my God! I want this. If that was in <laughs> Leandro, please make this, please. <laughs> um, and just just to go back to show, yeah. So the thing I'm hoping to do, with, like, if I just hit, uh, well, you've already shown me this, but it's just Control C. If I want to put it right here, like in here, boom, it puts it in, kind of thing. So that's what I'm going to show you. I took the repack. 
But yeah, if if this brush healing tool was available or or not well, a, a variation, mm -hmm. you just literally just smooths out the audio. I mean, I'll do it super heavy so you can wow. see it. See you can you can kind of see where it smooths it out together. Mm. Um, that has saved me a lot with little actors who don't know how to use green apples to get rid of the mouth pops. <laughs> uh, so yeah, no, that's that. I will say sometimes if I have if I'm struggling with audio, I'll come back in here and just I'll just use mm. the healing brush and you know if I want to get rid of this guy, I'll just brush mm. it out. It's gone. So yeah. I do have so a separate I do have a separate application for that. It's called Photo Sounder and it allows me to draw on the waveform like you do. It doesn't oh. have I don't know if it has the blending thing, but it definitely has the subtraction of frequencies and not only that but it also allows you to export the spectrum uh, in photo uh, as a as a photo file as an image file and then you oh. can load that image file in photoshop or whatever image editing you use oh, wow. you can draw this stuff and then take the image back to photo sounder and apply it on the audio oh jesus <laughs> that's great and <laughs> that's in fact amazing. the way that you are showing this i didn't know about this too and it looks very cool but given that you are working on the spectrum and yeah. the way that it works, it gives me the impression that this is doing FFT smearing or FFT mm, smoothing that we yeah, were just talking about. Too. It all yeah, comes back together too. If we could apply this um, um, to my, in my idea of smearing or smoothing, uh, that will be really cool. And oh it, it's God. doing in both axes that we talked about. It's both doing in multiple bins on the same time frame, so on the vertical line, as well as the uh -huh. horizontal line, which is time. So it's smoothing in both yeah. axes. Really exactly, cool stuff. Yeah. The only thing I came close to, there's a little plugin called Spectro that mm. it doesn't doesn't have the brush kind of that. I mean, you know, the brush gives you obviously very very fine control. Mm -hmm. But this, it's like twenty five bucks for if you use it just for Reaper. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't messed with it enough to say if I can. That's the only one that this teacher James said that is close to the idea of what the the healing brush can do. But oh. yeah, if uh, if Reaper came up with something similar like that, I'd I'd be like. Adobe Audition to the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is destructive in Adobe Audition. It is. Uh, yeah, yeah, so okay. It is destructive. So the whole thing about so the the, the view that you just saw um, is what uh, is called editor mode. I didn't realize that it is a proprietary thing for Adobe Audition. Obviously, nobody else really has it. Um, it, it from what I understand, it was designed in the '90s for radio DJs to be able to quickly edit like phone calls in before they're with music. And so that's why that's kind of so you can have multiple files open on, on the side, which is what I do when I get corrections in my main file, but you're only working on one file and yes, it is destructive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Uh, so I guess that is the difficulty for Reaper because it is a non-destructive editor and even the yeah. spectral edits that we were looking at in Fortis' screen, they are non-destructive as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I'm sure that yeah. it is, I mean, technically viable. You could just do all these changes and, and store them somewhere in a file. But maybe that's why Reaper doesn't have this feature. Anyway, yeah. interesting stuff. Anyway. And um, what was the, sorry, but Fotis, what was the name of the editor you mentioned that you could use in Photoshop? What was Photo it? Photo Sounder. Photo Sounder. So PH Photo. Yes, Sound work. Excellent, thanks. And then this is the okay. uh, the Spectro. I'll just put the link in there if anybody's interested in just taking a look at it. Yeah, it was created by Schwa, the co-creator of Reaper. Schwa. Yeah. Uh, oh. He's the Photo sort of Sounder? resident FFT expert for Reaper. Mm. Uh, uh, maybe he should. I'm actually more impressed by that other thing that he created it's called Sculpto. I didn't know this existed. Okay. I'm going to need this one a lot, but yeah, specs for our looks also, pretty cool. I was thinking on the Reaper forums, you can sort of do uh, feature requests. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, in the Reaper forums, they uh, read them as well. Uh, Make maybe... Reaper destructive again. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe Sorry. you could ask, uh, ask uh, there, uh, Kevin. Yeah, the, Coco, the Cocos forums are amazing. Oh, they are. I have, I've asked a couple of times that. Uh, okay. 
Sorry. Um, mm. You know, again, I, I, I appreciate that the majority of users of Reaper are going to be more music based. And mm. like I said, I've only literally found two, uh, two other people, one guy on the caucus forums who was who, who put it very succinctly. I want to I want to be able to highlight one part with razor editing, copy it and paste it into a highlighted space. And, and he said and then one guy when I posted the video on YouTube asking for help, one guy said, yeah, I need this, too. Let me know what you find out. <laughs> oh, so nice. Oh, there oh. are three of us in the world who want this <laughs> tiny, tiny little function. But, uh, Kevin, uh, I just posted in the chat uh, one of the stuff that you can get from Reapack, the Ultra Shell API that I was talking oh, about. Yes. And it says it says exactly that, that the Reaper has a lot of features for musicians, but not enough for podcasters. Yeah. yeah. And this yeah. one adds like 1,000 extra functions. So maybe one of those oh. could be useful for you. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so I'm thinking for the spectral editing. That's this is a lot what Isotope RX is doing, mm -hmm. and that could be useful for musicians as well, not mm -hmm. just yeah. podcasters. And 25 and... bucks for Reaper, I'm not going to pass that up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. but um, gentlemen, I've taken up enough of your time. Thank no, you. No, no, no such it. thing. It's a pleasure to have you. And yeah, I I like this because I am also in that space of editing audio, not not necessarily mm. making music all the time. And yeah. yeah, so please do the the research to see if you find a solution for this in Repack, Ultrashaw, mm -hmm. or otherwise, and maybe try to come up with a prototype using the custom actions, and then let us know how it goes. In worst case scenario, we can work together to build this for you because it is 100% doable. The okay. spectral editing that you showed, the healing thing, it's a bit more challenging, but the mm. action to yeah. pace in the right place, it's absolutely doable. So, yeah, don't don't worry. We'll I'm get excited. There. I, I, I'm not, I, I won't lie. There was a little bit of time to thinking, maybe Reaper just can't do this. Maybe <laughs> it's just I'm looking for something that nobody else wants except for the, the trio I found. Ah, no, well, no, 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 no such the, thing. If it exists, know, yeah, Reaper, is, I mean, if it exists, Reaper, Reaper should it. be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, there is a meme right. that says Reaper can do it already. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to start downloading some stuff. Um, and uh, I would maybe just love to sit in next time and listen to what, uh, what other people are looking or asking questions for. How uh, yeah, yeah, Do you sure. do this every yeah, Wednesday, so is it? That is oh. an excellent oh. transition because mm. I will give my update now and you can hang out and uh, hear sure. about it because I will make us big again by taking over the screen. Mm. Uh, because... What I have is on, on my update is not so much an update as an announcement. <laughs> so just so you know, Kevin, usually we meet every other week and you, it used to be on Wednesdays, but we are going to change that moving forward no. because one of our uh, study group members cannot make it on Wednesdays. And, but uh, we don't have a, a schedule yet, but here's the idea I have that I want to run by you and announce it. Do you know about this thing called Advent of Code? Advent mm. of Code? Nope. Do you know about Advent Calendars? Yes. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So it is no like that, but <laughs> instead of getting uh, one chocolate per day, you get a coding challenge every day. Oh, <laughs> and oh, it has wow. been happening for for some years now, since 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, so you get an, a new challenge every day of December, or I guess on the first 25 days of December. And people from all around the world try to solve the problem. And in the beginning of the month, it is relatively straightforward problems. And by the end of the month, it is like uh, some some challenging problems. Oh. So uh, I was talking to David, who you know from the previous meeting. He was sitting in with me. Yeah. He said that he wanted to do it this year. And I was like, oh, mm. I, I always wanted to do it, but I never had the right excuse because it is kind of a big time <laughs> commitment. Every day you have to solve these challenges and, and it adds up. So, yeah, uh, he encouraged me to do it, and uh, I was already in the mood for it. So what we thought about doing is 
streaming every day of December, <laughs> solving oh the challenges, God. solving the, the advent of code thing. So that would mean that I would be streaming every day of December, which I'm very much looking forward to. But it means that I would Amazing. be like super overcommitted because I'm doing other things. I will mm -hmm. be teaching in December. I will be traveling. It will be like a lot of a lot of stuff happening at once. So my update is how about we make it this this meeting be the last meeting of the year because the next mm -hmm. meeting would be in December already. And mm -hmm. then I will be doing the advent of code and I invite all of you to join me and, and yes. try and write some code together because I think that that's the beauty oh of the advent of code and coding challenges in general. They will start very approachable and then we could try different languages like I was thinking of using C++ for at least the first few challenges. And if there was something that had anything to do with like numbers or audio, we could even try JS effects. And you could join in on the call and and write code together, but make mm -hmm. it that this would be the last meeting of the year because then mm -hmm. next month I would be doing this other thing and you could join me. Mm -hmm. How about that? What about my F15 blurring? <laughs> <laughs> we can do I'm it as a thing. We can do crying. like a combination, like every stream we we can do this advent and then at the end we share each other's updates. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm looking forward to it. I'm 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 messing And yes, it. I don't know if I'm will be able to make it every single day of December, but I'm game. I'm gonna do it at least as much as I can. You're gay? <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My accent is a bit junk. <laughs> yeah, okay. So this is my, my update then, and it answers your, your question, Kevin. Um, we yes. usually meet every other week, but Kevin. this is most probably going to be the last meeting of the year, and gotcha. that means that it will be streaming even more often. So you can always jump into mm -hmm. the chat and jump into Wait. the Skype call and, and ask questions about Reaper-related things. I'm, of course, always open to that. And we are also available on the Discord chat. And over there, you will find people who know way more than me about um, audio, but also editing in Reaper. In our case, it's more like a real script. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And by Christmas, you you probably have the, at least the, the, the paste thing that you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be amazing. And uh, uh, I'll, I would love to watch. I have never written code for anything in my life, so I will just enjoy from afar. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my goodness, that's awesome, though. That's fantastic. That's We're going to play a video game now, if you're interested, but it's a video game about modular synths, and I don't oh. know if you're into that. <laughs> Well, no, I've, I've, I think I'm, I've got to get back to work, actually. I've got to insert okay. corrections for somebody, actually, it's due today. <laughs> Enjoy so then, and to nice to meet you. I must go. <laughs> but Close. again, uh, Leandro, thank you so, so very much. I appreciate your time and your expertise, and I will definitely, uh, whatever I find, I'll come back to bring and share with you guys. All right. Awesome. All nice right. talking thank to you. everybody. Yeah. Bye -bye. You, too. Bye. you too. You're welcome anytime. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Uh, yeah. Shoot. Game time? Gay yeah, time. But <laughs> yeah, gay time. Before we begin, I <laughs> just wanted to show this thing that I actually wanted to showcase in today's update, but I didn't get the chance to watch these videos because I was super busy this couple of days. So this, um, do you know that thing that YouTube does and suddenly it uh, recommends videos that have like 10 views? from un unknown people mm -hmm. just because you may be interested and sometimes you find gems because i'm really getting tired of all those um hype producers on youtube who are like hey folks it's your boy Fotis with yet another producer masterclass do you want to know this interesting secrets that top platinum producers don't want you to know about so you can get one billion streams on spotify hey folks did you know that you can use a poltic eq to make your 808 sound thick 
And then you have people like this one who are not screaming at the camera and they're just <laughs> quietly making some sound. I think, I think I ha you have a new career there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should clip this, make it a short. <laughs> and show them on the TikTok kids. They're going to love it. But yeah, this person is making some interesting experiments. And again, this totally popped up in my recommendations. And this person is using Reaper with some, both some uh, commercial and some free stuff, especially this Yamaha thingy that can load uh, stuff from uh, my old, my dad's old Yamaha PSR keyboard. And it will be interesting to see how I can combine this with Reaper's mod. Well, there well, you well, are, well. trying to be wholesome and find people who are uh, underrated. And then YouTube is trying to recommend yeah. you the real problem with <laughs> Ableton Live 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Case Weaver in beats. point. <laughs> yeah. Weaver is actually one of the music YouTube people that I really respect because he's not... He's, uh, he provides some very honest and brutal opinions that other people are scared to do because they're going to use their advertiser money. But Weaver doesn't care and he just straight up roasts everything. <laughs> but uh, anyway, this thingy, oh no, that's the thing. So you can load some STY styles, which are basically encoded MIDI files for Yamaha and you can uh, play this back with Reaper and this thingy which I think is free. Also, this person used Insta Composer, which I have, but they used it for drums, which I haven't done. And anyway, I'm gonna show this, uh, I'm gonna send this uh, URL to um, the chat because you people may also find some interesting stuff that you didn't know how to do with Reaper. And it's always a pleasure to see more people use this gargantuan level of functions that Reaper has and do something completely unique with it. It's always a plus. Cool, cool. Anyway, uh, speaking of pluses and minus, let's play our favorite mathematical game. Hey, how about that transition? <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, the last one that we solved with David successfully was this one, the tractor music player. And this is the puzzle that we still haven't solved, the tractor gear system. So how about we skip it and go to one oh, of the Oh, really? We ones. finally reached it? I think so, yeah. But it said new. What's up with that? Uh, oh, the new says is that we haven't solved it. Ah. We have played it, but we haven't solved it, I think. But yeah, we have played it tons of times. So they think that we should be able to do it. Ah. Mm. Do you want to look at another one? <laughs> yes. Uh, this one should be pretty easy. The drone pathfinder. I think I have solved it. Oh, we have a chat. Oh, boy, is AFK. Okay. So let's try this one. Just to get a warm up. Warm up. We always have this little lag <laughs> for each time step. Compare the current signal. So we have an input and output. For each time, time step, values. compare the current signal value at source one with the previous two values. Send the highest value of the tree to out one. If there is no previous value, assume the previous value is zero volts. And there is a signal delay. That's a new module. Yeah, we have a new thing. Ah, okay. So it's just teaching us what the signal delay does. And mm -hmm. we also will have the max module, right? The maximum module. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the max and the min. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it only compares two values, but we want to compare three values. So we will need mm -hmm. two of those max modules. Yeah, or we can make an end or not gate. No, that would be too complicated. Well, uh, they are different kinds of signals, right? The and, mm. or, and not, they work with digital signals. While oh, yeah. this is going to work with any analog signal, right? Any CV. Mm -hmm. 
or even audio for that matter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so take the input one, split it into three. Into three. Mm -hmm. And one is gonna go into a signal delay. Another one is gonna go to another signal delay. Oh. Okay. And then the outputs of the signal delays, they will go into the inputs of the max function. And then the output of the first max goes into the input of the second max. Mm -hmm. This this one that is missing comes from the original input. So from the splitter. And then the out mm -hmm. goes to the out. And then you have to tweak the signal delay to be of one and two samples if you can. Mm -hmm. So this is one, one and this is two. This is what two is, this is one. Okay, yeah, I think that that's it. Oh, we solved it. Good. Sweet. Sweet. It was that, it was that easy? <laughs> yeah, well, it's because it's one of the main mod, main challenges, the yellow challenges, the blue challenges are the hard ones. Ah, okay. I need to pay more attention. <laughs> no, it's okay because the blue ones are also called optional. They're not necessary to finish the game, but they are they have succeeded in making us, making our heads hurt. <laughs> but we're going to get there. We're going to be masters of this game one day. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we're going to, uh, my, my goal is to actually make a speed run of the entire game, like uh, solve all of the modules in one day all of the challenges <laughs> the, as fast as I can with the least amount of cables and modules. Ah, I like that idea. Mm -hmm. Build an accumulator that counts starting from zero and increases to one for each time step and sends it out to output one. It seems like there is a module for this. There must be, right? Well, this, it says tip signal delays can be used to build feedback loops. Finally, that's what I wanted to do with the other thing, but we didn't have a signal mm -hmm. delay there. Hmm. Yeah, so we created the Turing complete, completely by accident and got yeah. a Steve achievement for that. Uh, I guess we will need a sound module. Yeah, and it also gives us a sample and hold, which we didn't have in the previous one, challenge. So, and, the, uh, and the clock as well. Huh. Yeah, I guess the clock will be uh, because it increases by, hang on, build an accumulator that counts starting from zero and increases by one volt for each time step. I guess the time step is the oh. clock. Do we have to join these things? to keep? Yeah, I guess like we do a bias of one plus volt. one and we send that into the sum. Mm -hmm. Wait, it's not even... A Bias, I guess it is. What if we were to do it on the clock and so, no. No, I guess the output of the bias into the sum. Mm -hmm. And then what, the clock is gonna clock the gate of the sample and hold. I suppose, because it's not really clear to me in the description when they say mm -hmm. for each time step. What do they mean by that? We can check out the hints later if we get stuck. Can we see the waveforms for the expected output? Mm. Okay. It's very... Yeah, you can see in the numbers that the it's, it's, uh, it's increasing. It starts at zero mm -hmm. and then boom, boom. One, 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 plus one, plus one, and gets to 50. So mm -hmm. you get an ascending waveform. I see. Well, I guess the output of the sample and hold goes into the delay, and the output of the delay goes into the sample and hold. Huh. That and does look like a feedback loop. 
it is a feedback loop, and mm-hmm. well, we, we we need to send that signal to the output of the system as well. Mm-hmm. So, introduce a splitter, and ah, it, it gets a bit more complicated. Okay, so mm. the output of the signal delay will go to the splitter. That will go to the system output. Mm-hmm. It will also go into the sum module that we have on the second line. And the output of the sum module is what goes back into the sample and hold. Which oh, is not too far oh from God. what I wanted to do in that challenge that we mm-hmm. still haven't figured out. So this is this is my f- best attempt. Mm-hmm. We did get far <laughs> for just one volt. <laughs> but it is going up, isn't it? Am I wrong? It, it is, but... Uh, not at the right rate. Is, yes, but it does work. So there's that. So it adds like... It goes from one to... Oh, oh, wait. It's supposed to hold the value for two time steps. So change the clock. Nope. Change Let's it to four. Change it to four. Mm-hmm. And the other possible values, I guess five. <laughs> nope. Yeah, so it's not as simple as that then. But it is doing the right thing at the wrong rate, right? Mm. What if we adjust the signal delay? Fair enough. Nope. It just stops even quicker. Because now it's correct, but if we tweak the sample delay, it gets one value correct. Now it gets two values correct. So yeah, hints. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's read a hinge. Mm, this okay. is sample and hold. Mm-hmm. That's what we did, yeah. That's what we tried to do. Yeah, we have done that. Oh, there we go. We pretty much did this. We did this. <laughs> so the only problem we... is, again, the clock. We needed the mm-hmm. clock to be faster than it can be. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I have an idea, but I don't love it. Take the output mm-hmm. of the clock and split it. OK. And then One goes to the sample and hold like before. No, no, no. Take a notch mm-hmm. gauge. Oh. And one of the outputs of the splitter goes into the knot gauge. Then uh, what is it that I want to do here? Uh, my intent with this is the following. The clock goes up and down. The, the sample and hold is mm-hmm. activated on the rise of the clock but not on the fall. Mm-hmm. So what I'm thinking mm-hmm. is I want the clock to be twice as fast, so I will activate the sample and hold on the rise and on the fall of the clock. Mm-hmm. Ah, not a notch gauge, not a notch gauge. Remove the notch gauge. Okay. Add a signal delay instead. Hmm. Delay of one, perfect. Then that and i guess we will also need to sum things do you have a sum module yes yep. excellent so sum the output of the splitter with the output of the signal delay and send that to the sample and hold as the gauge the idea being that when it rises oh. there you go fix it. when it rises it 
activates the sample and hold, and then the signal delay is going to activate it again one sample later. Oh, that's brilliant. I'm actually tempted to use this in an actual virtual modular like Cardinal. Yeah, this is and a very I mean, contrived way of dividing the mm -hmm. clock or multiplying, depending on how you want to look at it, because you're making it faster. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, I think that that is a, a high note. So how about we stop mm -hmm. here? <laughs> yep. <laughs> and remember, people, we like Cardinal and we like voltage modular, but we don't like VCV rack. <laughs> mm, polemic. <laughs> What would Cardinal be without receiver rack then? That's exactly. that's my question. <laughs> we like VCV rec as well. Uh, yeah, we like some aspects of it. We like the open source aspects of it. In the same way that we like nails because we can use a hammer with them. <laughs> that is harsh. All right. <laughs> so. <laughs> I should make a YouTube <laughs> channel and get banned from like 10 different plugin developers at the same time. Yeah, you seem to be ready for the flame wars. All right, yeah. so with that, <laughs> let's wrap this up, shall we? Yes. All right. Um, thank you, Fossis and Bo, for being here and joining okay. me on this meeting. Yay! Mm -hmm. Hearts all, right. all around. And Thank you to John and, oh yeah, John and John. <laughs> John and John, oh. Uh, and Strato. My, my dad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you all for being here. And hey, yes, uh, John, this is a game. What is the name of the game again? I forget. The Signal State. Signal Stage, it's on Steam. And we have been playing mm -hmm. this at the end of our streams for a little while now. So thank you all for joining mm -hmm. me here on the chat. Thank you to everyone else who's watching this in the future as well. And <laughs> so remember, the plan is that we may not have meetings of the study group uh, in December, but we will be perhaps streaming every day. <sighs> Such a big <laughs> commitment that I'm afraid of saying this out loud and putting, out, putting it out there in the world. But that's the plan. Every day of December, we will be doing the advent of code including experimenting with different programming languages and just working on some mathematical in and, and, and interesting problems. Maybe something related to audio. Who knows? One can hope. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for being here, and I see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Cool. Thank bye you, bye. everyone. Bye. Take care. Thank you for watching the stream. You know how great it has been. Or maybe it sucked and I am glad that you stuck with me And so we'll all will be Back together for some more coding or talking or chilling The next time I'll be streaming